Speaking of generations, inequality, and massive scumbaggery, let's talk about uh, Ken Langone. He's the co-founder of Home Depot. He's a multi-billionaire. He's also one of the worst human beings on planet Earth. He's a truly extraordinarily despicable person. And he was talking with Neil Cavuto on Fox Business um, about a variety of things that he shouldn't be talking about. Uh, he was talking about uh, waxing poetic about how great it is that Trump has proposed an incredibly vindictive, cruel austerity budget. Uh, and then that led to a conversation about food stamps. Just, just think for a moment. You're a multi-billionaire. And let's really lower the stakes. We're not even saying that you need to do anything to benefit society. You're not even, you don't need to give something back because of all the luck you've had. You don't have to do anything to solve any social problems. You can just be a disgusting old man sitting in a bath of money. Just don't go on Fox and try to make life worse for people on, yeah, to literally take food out of people's mouths. This is the kind of depravity that we're talking about here. This is the kind of scumbag that Ken Langone is. And you'll listen to, he gets on the food stamps tangent, and then he has a brilliant theory about food stamps that I'm sure all the yes men and sycophants and sociopaths that surround him have co-signed on because, in fact, it's been Republican policy in many states. Here's Ken Langone talking with Neil Cavuto. I recommend some type of palate cleanser after watching or listening to this. To bed hungry. No American should starve to death. That's, a, that's part of our culture. That's part of our value system in America. On the other hand, we know what goes on. <laughs> Hell, people use food stamps to buy marijuana. That's illegal. Or cocaine or whatever the hell else these people use to get high. How do we make sure that we don't take a system that's well-intentioned that becomes badly abused? How do we take guys like me who outrageously get $40,000 a year from our government after I've done as well as I've done. 40000 for what? Social Security. Oh, yeah. That's, so you, don't, so yeah. you would be saying to, to Republicans as well, you know, I'm means saying to the whole in, bunch of them. Right. I'm saying to the whole bunch of them. You're sick of it. Not that I'm sick of it. We, we have the technology today to be able to do a better job of administering these plans. This notion that if somebody gets in an accident and they take it to an emergency room, unless you show them an insurance card, they say, well, you got to die, you haven't got an insurance, that doesn't happen in America. Well, let me ask you this. That we have some numbers out from the CBO on the administration's, uh, or more to the point, Republicans, American Health Care Act. Now, of course, mm -hmm. you have arrived at hospitals. You do a lot of good for folks and all. Sometimes. But this, call, this calls for, would reduce federal deficits by $119 billion over the coming decade, but increase the number of people who aren't insured by $23 million in 2026 relative to the current law. And I don't know how they came to those conclusion. About 12, 11, 12 million had Obamacare now. So how they can come to the conclusion that 23 million by 2026 won't have it because of this. But what do you make of it? Let me say something. Go back all the way to the creation of Obamacare. I think they had one thing in mind when they created it, a single payer. That's what they wanted. Only and they so. created a law that guarantees by its own failings, it'll have to end up being a single payer. Which would be the United States government. Which would be the government. And guess what? That's not what I think America wants. If I want to buy my own health insurance, as I should, and I want to pay for it as I can, then I should be able to do it. I think this was all a scheme going all the way back to how do we put a system in place that will collapse of its own weight. And that's what we've done. Well, let me ask you this. So, okay, if only it were so, and yes, eventually we will need to move to a single-payer health care system. Only because it's the only thing that makes sense. It's the or only, literally the only thing that makes sense. Public option, single-payer, that sort of thing. Or a public option, which actually, if they had supported a public option, the system might have worked a bit more effectively and actually been the formula to hold off single-payer universal health care. There's a lot to unpack there. First, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, there's 44 million Americans that participate in food stamps, uh, in 2016, 75% of those people had worked a job the year before they received the benefits. That's in the Daily News. Many Republican governors, including now Scott Walker, has a new push out to do drug testing for people 
that take advantage of programs like food stamps. States that have implemented it have shown no disparity in terms of people using drugs that are on those programs, and those programs have proven essentially to be invasive wastes of time, but they fulfill their purpose because the real purpose of that policy is to demean, humiliate, and abuse people that need programs like food stamps. That's the point. Now, there is no reporting and no anecdotal evidence that I know of of people going to drug dealers and swiping their EBT cards. I have never heard that in my life. Um, and if he wants to stop getting $40,000 a year in Social Security, he instead of advocating for cuts and means testing, which will undermine the whole program, I'm sure Ken Langone can come out and say to lift the cap on Social Security taxes, progressively index it, and then he could put a lot more. A lot more than 40000 Ken. A lot more than 40000 That will actually benefit the system enormously. And then you, you won't have to worry about getting the forty k back. Yeah, it'll just be part of the part of the way it works. It will just be part of the general fund, and you won't have that burden. You old, horrible, 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 disgusting human. And actually, what we should be doing with people like uh, Ken, with the wealth of people like Ken Langone, is taking it from them via taxation and yes. giving it to people not only in food stamps but in just cash. Just everybody, yeah, should get cash that they could actually use for drugs. <laughs> Or whatever they want. If they want to use it for drugs, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. If they want to use it for it's fine. Oreos, that's fine. If they want to use it for quinoa, that's fine. Whatever. I it's would not suggest Ken quinoa because I'm health oriented. But my bottom line commitment is take Ken Langone's money. No one who created Home Depot should be worth that much. Hey, Sam Cedar here. Uh, folks, you probably heard about the whole uh, YouTube uh, advertiser apocalypse. Well, we're suffering from it too. We need your help. If you want to keep this show alive, you want us uh, to be able to still put out uh, clips on a regular basis, head over to our Patreon page. Here's the link right here or down below there. And uh, just give us a couple bucks a month uh, and support this program. Really appreciate it.